Today we're gonna to be working on a chest piece. I'm gonna give you a walkthrough on my approach to shading. Another tattoo video. We're doing a little spin off of the creation of man onto my client's chest. It's pretty much just two hands facing each other. One of the hands has no skin. Today I'm going to be talking about shading though. So I'm working on hands. Hands can be intimidating. Uh, this was not something that came easy. I was bad at doing hands for a long time. So whenever I approach a piece like this that might be more difficult, I try to keep things simple. Simple, simple, simple. It's very easy to get overwhelmed on a piece, so I try to find patterns and have a strategy for designs or concepts like this. So my approach to this hand is I'm gonna be blocking out all the dark areas first. So the deep shadows in the hands, the, you know, the cracks in the palm, I'm gonna build out the structure. Once I have that structure built, it's a little easier for me to see the end result of the tattoo and not feel so overwhelmed throughout the process. Now building these dark areas, you have to be patient. So I'm using the 3RL technique shading. Let me give you the breakdown real quick on the equipment. I am using a Bishop wand, the shader, so the 4.2 stroke. I'm using a 3RL Da Vinci needle, and I'm running my machine around five volts. Now I like to run my machine a little slower because it ends up being more forgiving. With this approach though, you will get more texture. What I mean by that is you'll get that like dotty look. For this piece, I thought that would be cool to have texture. He has a lot of black work on his body, so I might match a little better to have the texture. So, I'm blocking out these dark areas in the palm, in the fingers, leaving my mid-tones and highlights, skin tone for now, building the structure. You can see I'm not going crazy on these details. I'm putting in just enough to show little indents in the digits of the finger or on the ridges of the thumb. Not going crazy with the detail. What this is going to do is simplify the piece. It'll be very readable or legible from a distance. So we're really just breaking down the piece into shapes. I'm sticking to my stencil. I'm focusing on simple shapes rather than trying to create a hand. You can see on these fingers, I laid in the dark shades and the cut of the digits, and now I'm going over the whole thing, flicking up to build out the mid-tone on the lower half of this finger. So we're putting in our dark shades, we're going over the entire thing to get our mid-tone, then we are going to produce another layer of a very light gray to carve out our highlights. And what I mean by highlight is skin tone. And as I'm doing this, as I'm just focusing on the simple shapes in the fingers and the top of the hand, and I'm leaving my highlight, my skin tone open, you can see the piece start to come together. And if you look in close here, you can see what I'm talking about with the shapes. These are simple, simple shapes. You focus on the shape of the shadow. You build off that to create the shape of the mid-tone and all this frames out the shape of the highlight. You can see these nice round highlights that I'm creating with these shades. And it creates a simple value scale or system for your approach. Once I have everything blocked out, now I'm really gonna be paying attention to the value of the piece and the contrast. So I have all my shapes in there. I take a step back, I can see, okay, this thing kind of looks like a hand now, but it does have a lot of open skin left. So now I'm just taking, you know, a, a light gray and I'm washing over the entire piece just to darken certain aspects of the piece, build up the value a little bit more. You'll see me come back into my shadows to make them a nice black in certain areas and build that contrast. Now it's time 
to go over to the bones. I'm gonna block out my darks, I'm gonna move into my mids, and I'm gonna carve out my highlights. You can see right now I'm just doing a back and forth motion. What this will do is create a dark edge inside the shapes that I'm making in my dark tones. This will show difference between little bones in the hands and what we're talking about right now is directional pattern. So you see me going back and forth. Every time I change the directions, I'm leaving a little bit of pressure on those lines, creating kind of a dark wall on the image. Now I don't always want to show directional pattern. You can see here I'm doing small circles. This does not have a hard edge. This is just a shade in the bone. So I'm doing little kind of oval shapes and this will avoid leaving that hard edge. A lot of people will ask me, hey, do you do the back and forth pendulum style or do you do the small circles? I, I do both depending on where I am in the piece. As you just saw, I was going up and down the outer part of the stencil because I wanted kind of a shadow line in there. I wanted to define that edge a little bit more. I'm doing it here again. But there will also be times where I just want a soft shade in the area or I don't want any hard edges. Therefore, you're going to see me circle. And that's it. Once I have you know, my darks in there, my midtones, I'm doing the same thing as the first hand. I'm going to look at the values. I'm going to build them where they need building. I'm going to darken the blacks, bump up the contrast, and pretty much brush over the entire image to create a really nice value. Make sure my grayscale is there. Make sure there's not too much open skin. and we're done. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you got something out of it. If you didn't, just keep watching. There's still hope for you. Till next time.